this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm glad you're back. I hope you enjoyed that part, uh, I call it part E segment, what we did on the 29th of uh, March, 28th of March. And what I decided to do was to send out first the last segment uh, dealing with prayer and the responsibility that we as believers, while we're being encouraged to, to stay in place, shelter in place, uh, that we take the opportunity to, to pray uh, for this pestilence, this COVID-19 to be arrested and uh, this pestilence to be ceased. We find out more and more, I mean, it's, it's amazing about how many people, they, 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 the numbers they get, people dying. I mean, I think the last one I heard was like 900 people died. I mean, that tell you, that's a deadly uh, disease if that's what's happening. And, and I have no reason to believe it's not. And there's a name behind every last one of those numbers. And there's families being affected because of those deaths. And just keep, keep continuing to pray for the family members. Pray for those who are battling this disease in the hospital. And just, just continue to pray that uh, we get, do get this under control. I mean, even today we heard out now, this is the uh, 3rd of April. What they're saying is now they, they want you to wear masks because they, they realize it's not just where people have uh, drips coming out of their mouth when they're speaking. They're saying is this thing lingers in the air. So somebody could be speaking or sneezing and it's still because it's such a small uh, pessimist it actually is still floating in the air. So a person could come by and it could be up in the air for, I don't know how long it could be floating, but it could float and linger. And then it also could linger on different things, at least for a day or so on some things, or a few hours. And, and that's how people are starting to get it spread to one another. So just keep that in prayer. Um, but the focus I had in this, this particular study uh, on the uh, 28th of March uh, we're starting to focus on the fact that the, knowing Him means future glory. Meaning that the whole creation is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of man. Amen. And this is the opportunity where the church can demonstrate His power and His love to all fellow believers by praying in, the, in their homes. Uh, not where other people can be seen as we talked about in part E. But just to be Praying to God and say, Lord, deliver us. Give the gifts that you've given man as far as the knowledge and so forth to, to come up with an answer to these pestilence. If that's how you want to do it, oh, Lord, just do it any way you want to. Amen. But anyway, so so we're, we're talking about the future glory. The whole time, the shift for the paradigm is for the, the body of Christ. Not pastors and, and uh, other fivefold gift ministries, but the body itself which will include the fivefold ministries, of getting out there and making a difference. People say, they say, well, well, when are you guys going to start doing some of the things we see in the Bible? Some of the miracles and so forth. It's time for us to rise up and, and start allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us. Amen. So what I want to do is I put down here 1 Corinthians, uh, or 1 Colossians, yeah, 1 Corinthians, where it says in one 18 it says that the for the preacher of the cross is a them that perish foolishness but to us which are saved it is the power of God and as the point is that we was endued on power on the day of Pentecost and it's time for us to exercise that power and that's what I'm saying we don't, we don't want to limit it to being in a building we don't want to limit it, limit it to the fivefold ministry gift we want to let the body Allow the power of God to flow through us and into our community and our environment. It says, the, the, even 8.22 said, For we know that the whole creation, grown in the travails of pain, together until now, until the manifestations of the man, sons of God. Amen? So, I, I put on Facebook, on one of the Bible studies, uh, a comment. And I wanted to read that, and then we'll go ahead into the video. It says here, 
and I'm reading it verbatim. He said, hello everyone. My intent is to encourage believers to reach out with love toward those who some view as too worldly or unworthy to fellowship with. I believe Christianity is not a religion, but a way of life and fellowshipping with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and other believers, plus preaching the gospel to the world. The good news, that's what the gospel is. Definition of religion, a state of religious, a service and worship of God or supernatural, to me, to me and other supernaturals other than God that people try to worship. Um, commitment or devotion to religious faith or observance, a personal set of institutional systems of religious attitude, belief, and practices, scrupulously conformity, consciousness, a cause, principles, or system of belief held to with adore and faith. In other words, they, they, there's people, they, they, the institution, these systems, these methods are included, inserted, into the believer uh, based on religion and we're saying there's a religion that we don't need we don't need that we don't need to uh, adhere to a sense of principles or behavior that other people believe they should have and then we do it so, do it so rudely and then we make it a law and we need to stop doing that you know do everything you do is in love I can see you can have a system of excellence or anything else you want to do but do it in love and not impose that and, or, or be disappointed people, okay? I say here, the problem I see with this definition is that many disqualify other believers for their lack of commitment, devotion, observance, institutional system, institutionalized system, religious attitude, practices, devotion, observance, uh, Institutional system, so I read again, religious attitude, practices, scrupulous conformity, consciousness, principles, and belief held with ador. Ador means zeal, extreme vigor, or energy or intensity. Christianity is a way of life. And in David, there are some people that have a more zeal, more zest, more uh, intensity toward their, their devotion to the belief and the faith. It's, it's, that's, we don't want to knock that. We just want to knock you try to pose that on somebody else and believe they both hold on to your principles and your belief and then you both hate them and kick them out because they don't do that. I mean, we move from, from extreme sin <laughs> to just you're not even meeting all these standards that I believe you should have. And, and those standards are man's standards, not God. They're man's standards. They, they take liberty away from the gospel. We need to move away from that and just encourage one another to grow in love. Amen? Christianity is a way of life but not of the institutionalized methods of behavior. John 14 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Our job is to point to Jesus and give others the same mercy and grace to our fellow believers and non-believers that we received. Give that same grace that we receive and give it to other people. We should not get disappointed in anyone's lack of conviction or devotion, but pray for everyone to get to know Him. Philippians 3.10 This is what the whole theme of the, the year is that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering being made conformable to His death. To non-believers, Jesus is calling you to Him. He is not condemning you because of your social life. John 3, verse 17. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world, that means the world, everybody, might be saved. Saved from what? Some people say, what are saved from? Well, the problem line is that we're all born from Adam. And because of that, 
We're all born in condemnation. We're all born to die. You know, we grow and get old, but it, the, the death starts uh, as we, we grow older and older. And God said that was never the intent. He definitely wanted for us eternity uh, with Him was to have life. So, bottom line is, this study is talking about that. And I just want to let you know, Christianity is not a religion. Everybody has different ways how they want to practice Jesus. I mean, when I mean practice, I mean <laughs> live their faith. But don't pose on somebody else, okay? All right. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see how we we'll change the commentary on the uh, part B. But this is just the introduction. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. All right? God bless. Enjoy talking to you. I do. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, Amen. Well, we're going to get started, Brother Amen. Jackson. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Right there. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and praise your holy name. Father, you said when two or three got in your name, you've been in the midst of them. When they're invited, receive the presence of the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in all truth. Father, we come to glorify your name. We come to lift up the name of Jesus. We ask Heavenly Father, as we pray for this country, Lord, we pray concerning this pestilence that's currently uh, infecting the entire world. And we ask Heavenly Father that, that, that we as believers come in agreement. Come in agreement that the deliverance is coming from you. Father, we'll lift up any way you want to do that deliverance. Father, as far as the doctors and medical staff and scientists, we pray, Lord, anoint them and gift them. If that's how you want to use it, Lord, or if you just want to arrest this president on your own, reaching out and touching every believer and every saint to be able to call upon the name of Jesus and to deliver us Amen. from this pestilence and get us back on track of what we need to do. But our Heavenly Father, yes, I just Lord. pray, Lord, for the ones that are sick in the hospital right now. I pray, Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. for deliverance. I pray for healing. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, for those who are having symptoms, Father, that they be healed and recovered. Pray for entire families that's being affected by this. And I pray for wisdom in this country concerning the spreading of this, this disease. We need to go ahead and arrest it. We need to sit there and stop the contamination so that we can get this thing on, yes, in order. Father, we're all, we all yes, going to do is lift up you. And we thank you as you deliver us and, and guide us. And Father, we right now open up this Bible study and we pray, Lord, there'll be a blessing not only to us who are fellowshipping today, but those who will participate in the future and watch our videos on, on um, YouTube. Lord, anoint us this day and this time. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. 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 All right. Hey, brother, I, I wanted to cover something that we, we was talking last week, if y'all mind. And then, you know, I want to hold up no more than we have to, but... Uh, if you see the scriptures on there, Brother Jackson, let's say when we was talking, I put down that first Corinthians. Listen, this is a this is an L Johnson scripture, I think. Uh, but it's first Corinthians 1 8, you know, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power. Of God. Amen. You know, when we start off with that Philippian, you know, I, I told you like the theme we're doing this this year was talking about Philippians uh three ten that I said that we may know him. I didn't put it up there, brother. I just put it down there. That we may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, conform unto his death. The point I'm saying is we want to know him. And then I talk about that power, Elder. It's the power of the resurrection. And it's that power that houses us to deal look, look, with this disease, this pestilence that's going on. You know what I mean? It's the power. Right. It's the power of God that we want to exercise in our life. But to those who are perishing, it is foolishness. But to us, it's not. You know? That's right. You know, now, one, right. one of the things is also... Uh, Elder eight, Romans eight twenty two. This said, "For we know that the whole creation groaneth and moaneth and travail and pain together to now." For that verse I left out there is that for the manifestations of the sons of man. Mm -hmm. 
That's what that's what the whole world looking for us, the manifestation of the sons of man. And and and, and, and it's it's time for us to understand that that manifestation comes from the power of God. Isn't that right, Elder? It's the power of God, right? It is, yeah. I, I said this out on Facebook. Elder, you on Facebook too? You're not on Facebook. Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Right? I am. Yeah. I put on this Facebook, uh, Brother Jackson. This is what I read here. I said, and this just this goes out even for the for for, for people we're gonna record this for. I said, Hello everyone. My intent is to encourage believers to reach out with love toward those who some view as too worldly and ungodly to fellowship with. You remember we were talking about last week about the people that goes to the club and all that other stuff, right? Right. Right. And then there's people who just 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 wide open, period. <laughs> just out there, right? But I said, right. I believe Christianity. This is what I want to focus a little bit. Christianity is not a religion. Praise God. Hey, Amen. So we're in agreement with that. Christianity is not a religion. It is a way of life and fellowshipping with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and other believers, plus preaching the gospel to the world. Amen. And then I, then I put down here, this is what I put down here, the definition. I wanted you to see what y'all think about this. Definition of religion. A state of a religious. Now, you know, you could be religious in, in, in running. You can be religious in golfing. You can be religious mm -hmm. in, in, in anything that you do over and over again. you just just religious. Mm -hmm. A service and worship mm -hmm. of God or the supernatural. See, so therefore now we're talking about just, we're talking about it in supernatural, not just God Himself. The things in other realms, I think that's how I look at that as supernatural. So it's not just right. it's not just God. Commitment. Now here's the piece: commitment or devotion to religious faith or observance, a personal set or institutionalized system of religious attitude, belief. And practices, scrupulous conformity, consciousness, a cause, principle, or system of belief held with ador and faith. Now that's what the definition is. The next one I put down here, okay. the next one I put down, let me put it here. The problem I see with the definition is that many disqualify other believers for their lack of commitment, devotion, observance, institutionalized system, religious attitude, practices, scrupulous conformity, consciousness, principles, and belief held with ardor. Ardor means zeal, extreme, vigor, or energy, intensity. I said Christianity is a way of life, but not of institutionalized methods of behavior. It says in John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Our job is to point to Jesus and give others the same mercy and grace to our fellow believers and non-believers that we receive. We should not Amen. get this. This is the piece here, I think, Elder, that comes in that that has hurt our witnesses sometimes. We should not get disappointed in anyone, Brother Jackson, lack of conviction to devotion, but pray for everyone to get to know Him. And there's my Amen. scripture, Philippians three ten, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering be made conformable unto his death. To non-believers, Jesus is calling you to him. He is not condemning you because of your social life. John 3, 17. Mm -hmm. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. 
So that that and, and I think a lot of people have been turned off Elder because of the institutions, the structure of the word, you know, being religion. And and I understand yes. and I understand and I wanted and I think I'm trying to mess, get an elder more on this is see I understand that the uh, every institution far as far as our faith in Christianity has to have a structure as far as how they organize to to perform to do the ministry. I think elder sometimes is that some people are transformed, you know, when they say you know, like if you have a business, Brother Jackson, in a business you got a certain standard that you want in that business. And and the people that you work on your staff, you got a certain expectation of how they should perform. You know, mm -hmm. uh, because you're saying right. I'm providing a particular service, and so therefore, when you talk about ministry, I can understand ministries. Each ministry, you know, do you agree with that each ministry should have a if they 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 have a structure, and they may have a a a, a, a uh, what you call it a, a, a principles, a guidelines. Hey, there's brother Addison. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Amen. Amen. We we're sitting there, we're starting off with uh, the we said that the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those that are perishing, but unto us is the power of God. And then we then was also in the Romans we're talking about that the you know the manifestation, the whole world, the whole creation grown is for the manifestations of the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Then I then when I just finished doing I gave a definition of religion. And I put this out on Facebook, and I know you're on Facebook anyway. Uh I put out the what the what I had was the definition of religion, and then I'm actually getting into the part where I said the uh the problem I have with the definition of religion. And I'm gonna read that to you since you just came on. Y'all mind, Brother Jackson? No matter at all, brother. Yeah, I would say the problem I have with the definition of religion is that many disqualify other believers for their lack of commitment, devotion, observance, institutionalized system, religious attitude, practice, uh, scrupulous conformity, consciousness, principles, and belief held with andor. Andor means zeal extreme vigor or energy and intensity. I said Christianity is a way of life, not an institutionalized method of behavior. John 14, 6 said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Our job is to point to Jesus and give others the same mercy and grace to our fellow believers and non-believers that we receive. We should not get disappointed in anyone's lack of conviction to devotion, but pray for everyone to get to know Him. And that's why I put down Philippians 3.10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering be made conformable unto His death. To non-believers, Jesus is calling you to him. He is not condemning you because of your social life. John 3, 17. For God said not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And I think, Brother Jackson, that it's the issue sometimes is that the, uh, the institutions, where I said I understand each institution should have standards and principles for that ministry, but the congregation is not part of that principles and guidance. In other words, if what Brother, Brother Asher was saying, like if I have a business, my business should have a certain standard, a certain method of excellence. Same thing in the military, right, Brother Jackson, when, when we had a, if you was in charge of a squadron or you're in charge of a, of a wing, that you had a certain principles and standards and attitude of that organization. But right. when we talk about the believer in himself, they are not working for the church. They're working for Jesus. And we, we can't impose 
those things on a person, right? In other words, I don't pose the standard. When I was in the military, I couldn't impose the behavior of how I'm supposed to act as an officer to a civilian. Because that's not the expectation that I should have for them. My job is to serve and protect the Constitution of the United States. But their Constitution is to give those people the right to live with freedom and liberty. It gives them the right to enjoy their life. You know? And I think the same thing right. we're talking about is when we bring people, important people to Jesus, we don't pose those whatever your institution is. Whatever your method is, don't impose that on a believer. Because God got different ways of leading people. Therefore, we, we just got to get patient with one another and not condemn people because they don't have the same you know, conviction. They don't have the same devotion that you want to impose on your institution. And I think that's where it turns people off is we we look at somebody and say you ain't doing the way we're doing it this this, this is how we not this we don't do this in our church you know <laughs> i just the same thing all the time when they're talking about fast prayer some people say i mean baptism well you don't if you've been baptized in our church you ain't saved now i mean people have the dash to say <laughs> say that <laughs> that it's just those little things that i think the I understand the structure people need to have, but they need to understand that is not the structure posed on a, you know, believers in Christ. It's your ministry, you know, your staff. That's who you can impose that on because they both be working for you, for the ministry, right? They, they're the ones that are supposed to set up the children ministry. They're the ones that are supposed to set up the parking lot ministry. They're supposed to be the ones that sit there and say, look, when they, when you come in, they come in the parking lot, I don't need you to be yelling at them and cursing at them. I need you to be welcoming them. I need you to park them you know, in peace and understanding. I need the choir to perform in excellence. You know what I mean? You can pose that. Does that make sense where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense. And the, uh, the other thing that keeps coming to me, Pastor, is when we, uh, you know, we can use the word uh, to our own, uh, for our own desires, uh -huh. as opposed to, as opposed to what the will of the Father is, as opposed to how Jesus um, was mentioning to the disciples when he <clears throat> was talking about service. And the the, uh, it's not about the individual, but about uh, what we can do for others and what we are doing for others should be a demonstration as to uh, how we, you know, our love of God right. and our belief in, in Jesus. And so when uh, people are using religion uh, in a, people are using religion, we tend to use it in a way that uh, try, we try to exalt ourselves and put down others and uh you know that's another aspect of turning people off yeah whereas like we're saying you know if we accept uh everyone uh we approach everyone with love with compassion with mercy with the grace that god gave us right unconditional love then our approach would be altogether different you know it, it would be that way of life that you're talking about as opposed to rigor for the sake of rigor, you know, yeah. and uh, and use law trying to find a way to to put somebody down. Yeah, Amen. yeah. Matter of fact, Brother Addison was saying and went back in some of his testimonies in the past that when he was fired up, it was it was really dogmatic, right, Brother Addison? Was it? You know, now the question is, where did that come from? Did, what what where did well, it, it, it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, it, 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 Satan uh, perverts the word, and and then we just kind of got it from him. I mean, he takes the truth and manipulates it in a way that uh, it's it sounds good. You know, there's a little bit of, of, of correctness there, but he he manipulates it um, in in a way that is not intended by God. By God, right? And so. 
we did it the same way. It's just how you know, back in the day, as as we're all learning about how to use the word, because you, again, it's it's beyond our understanding where it comes from, and what God is doing is trying to put it in a way so that we can we know how to work it, and so. Um, people were, uh, you know, we, I mean, we still do it today. And that's the reason why we're talking about it. Exactly. The fact that we, we use it for our own benefit, for our own uh, ulterior motives. And that is wrong. We should, the only motive we should have is to, to, to please God and um, humble ourselves and find a way to do that. You know, the thing about it too, though, it, remember, you know, the, the, the flesh is enmity against God. And so once we try to use the word, you know, our flesh wants to jump in and try to figure out how we can make it work for, for it. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and uh, and it can be it can mess up your head if you're if you if we don't surrender, if we're trying to give our flesh some credence, <laughs> well, we're going to mess up. Woo. You know, we, Woo. We, we need to not do that and just let the, the spirit of God in us. Uh, have his way and then we will learn even when we make a mistake if that mistake is is uh, motivated uh, spiritually uh, God's gonna w work it out you know yeah and uh, and that's what I see with people there's, it seems to be uh, I think because of who taught us the uh, scriptures or who taught us or uh, who propagated the gospel uh, in this area they have a tendency to try to transform the external environment to meet their image or their image of what godliness is yeah but i think from the beginning that the scripture was given to us uh the relationship itself with god was given to us to transform us yeah it said that you are the light of the world come on now and we take in terms of what the light does the light doesn't go out and transfigure anything it just reveals it for what it is we have taken christianity or the uh, disciples, the, being disciples of Christ, I, it's a real hard thing to say Christianity uh, and disciples of Christ in the same breath because a lot of times it's nowhere near each other. Yeah. A disciple is being conformed to the image of his master. Christianity is trying to conform the world to what it considers to be a godly environment. But the kingdom of God is not does not come by observation, but it's revealed from within. Uh -huh. So it's an it's an internal experience and it's, it's an internal change. It has nothing to do with us going out to change the world. It has something to do with God conforming us in the image of His Son, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. It, David said, "Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path." Come on now. It's not outside of us. Christianity is not outside of us. Period. Um, for us to see a person and judge them concerning their behavior. It's actually for us to step outside the bounds of our, our purview. I, I guess that's a good word. They should see us in our conforming to the Lord Jesus Christ and be convicted by our very presence. Mm. It's not our word to convict them. We should convict them. Without a word, we should cause them to consider their actions. Okay. And and that's why, and it takes a lot. It, it, it the unfortunate. I say the unfortunate. The rub of it is that we're born cardinal and we're accustomed to changing our external environment. That's what we try to do. Right. <laughs> when we're born of the spirit, is now our internal environment is being changed. And when we meet that standard in him, and I think that's where the word comes in when it says like it's waiting for the re revealing of the sons of God. When we have mastered this thing, when it has mastered us, when we have been conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, then we're able to, in a sense, influence our external environment by our very presence. Mm. And that Amen. is what I think this thing is about. It's not about us making the world a godly place. It's about us being made godly in the world system, that the world might see what God is. Yes. Or the nature of God through us. Come on. And then the world makes its own decision. So for me to, you know, look at a person and say, you're not fit for this environment or you're not fit to be with us, it's for me like, to be like a fisherman who keeps throwing fish back in the water. <laughs> or go fishing, you know, on, on, on an island instead of in a lake. No, we are to attract people to the Lord Jesus Christ by virtue of who we are. Yes, sir. Then that, that's the, the whole the, the thing. The issue becomes we, we don't know how to use the scripture. It's almost like we don't know how to apply it. We keep trying to apply it to the world 
and we're supposed to be being applied to ourselves. Come on now. <laughs> the relationship, and, and when that application is really embraced, what happens is it gives you a close relationship with the Father. Mm. The Spirit of God is allowed to work in and through you. And the, and the impact of that move or that, that dynamic begins to ex it, it change you or your appearance, your external appearance, and changes. Yeah. The people are able to see you as I guess you would see RF manifested on a television screen. Woo. They begin to see the Spirit of God manifested in you. They see God in the flesh. Yeah. Like it says that Jesus really walked they the see world. Jesus. He, said he is the manifested image of the invisible God. Right. He is the manifested image of the invisible God. He was the light of the world while he was in the world. Come on now. now. He says you are the light of the world. Uh -huh. And now he's sharing with us that we might be that image. Yes. We are the manifested image of the invisible God. We are the manifested image of the invisible God. And God does not make folk do what he wants to. Come on. He shows them. <laughs> he shows them what it looked like. Come on. He did. We're, we're supposed to be those images that show people the nature of God. Come on, brother. Now, that, that, that makes sense to me. Is because that's how Jesus was. That's why the, the Pharisees could not understand and recognize Jesus because they that that he wasn't acting the way they act. He didn't perform the way they wanted him to perform. He didn't conform to how they had it set up. And when we do that, I think that's where that's where the problem come in at, isn't it? 